Well, hello again, everybody. A few things are different again today. I don't have a mic. I do have a tripod. I'm not wearing any makeup today. We're going a little more natural. And I lost my apron, so we're not wearing that either. And we're gonna be uh, cooking some grub from West Africa and watching most likely a Senegalese film called Mondabi. Yeah, so the rice dish is called jollof rice, which is just a spiced Western African rice. They have different varieties in Nigeria and Senegal and I'll be eating it with crispy drumsticks that I'm going to be cooking in the oven in a pretty simple spiced preparation. I guess we'll get started. Um, okay, so this recipe, just so that I have everything clear for myself, it's going to require tomatoes, Roma tomatoes, onion, habanero pepper, some bay leaves and other spices, and rice. And so I think I'm gonna get the rice started before, ooh, wait, let's see. Do I wanna get the chicken started first? It's a tough one. We're definitely gonna turn the oven on first. I always forget to do that, and since we want crispy chicken, it's gonna be 425. So that's gonna take a while to heat up, which means that I should get started on the rice. So I need to place tomatoes, paprika, and habanero in a food processor and blend till smooth. Like I mentioned last episode, I do not in fact have a food processor, but I do have a nice blender. So we're gonna use that. And I think I'm gonna chop some of these things roughly just to make it easier. So there's my habanero. Whew. I am pretty, um, I would say tolerant to spicy food, so I think that this will go okay, but we'll see. And I'm just cutting out the, uh, the little stem part of these tomatoes, just because I think they're icky. Just like that. I wonder why we put paprika in first without any of the other spices, because we also have white pepper and thyme and bouillon seasoning so don't know what that's about i haven't been dreading doing this one it's just i've been pretty anxious lately and when i get anxious i really don't like to cook so and then the idea of having to film myself obviously adds to the anxiety of it so i'm gonna go grab my blender I'm gonna get some good audio of this i'm sure so here is some smoked paprika. I buy it in bulk and then put it in here because I'm a paprika fiend, which is kind of ironic since bell peppers aren't like my favorite thing. And I'm pretty sure that's what paprika is made of. Paprika? Pa paprika? Pa paprika? We're not gonna actually move the entire tripod situation because that sounds terrible. So we're just tilting. It'll be a fun canted angle and it will be exposure therapy because you'll see my tummy. This is a half teaspoon measurement, so we're gonna do two of these. One, and two. That actually wasn't so bad. That was not that hard. Oh, 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 spicy. This'll be fun. Maybe I'm not as tolerant of spice as I thought. So now I gotta boil this down. That will be going on in the background. I'm not going to just video that entire thing, but here's our paste. Blender worked pretty great, so. We're basically just reducing down our own spicy pepper paste. Oh, I just took a little nibble. <laughs> See, I have a little bit of sauce on my spicy, like. I always forget about habaneros. They're like multiple times as spicy as jalapenos. I'll have to look up the Scoville and then maybe put it up as a graphic. Um, cool, so that's going. And I think we're gonna chop up some onions. I got all of this produce 
and the chicken thighs that we're going to be making from the Mexican market in town because um, they actually had habanero peppers and guys go to the Mexican market they have some great stuff I asked the man at the butcher counter for four drumsticks and he gave me four pounds these onion pieces look kind of long so I think we're gonna slice it Ooh, already getting teary-eyed okay if we're slicing then the process is a little different One more onion. Wait, did I not buy another onion? Where did my onion go? I just need to show you this. Apparently I buy onions a lot because I already had this one and these ones. And these are solidly squishy now, so we're gonna throw those out. Solidly squishy is a funny oxymoron. Okay, I just tried like six different strategies trying to chop that last onion to varying degrees of success. I am definitely crying a little bit. So we're gonna use my Dutch oven for this. Just felt worthy. And we might be seeing mostly stovetop for the rest of this video. That might be how this shakes out. I really should have gotten some like audience reception over whether they preferred seeing my face or the food. But I still have one more video to make after this, so I'll get the chance to redeem myself if this one ends up being truly terrible. So this is how our paste is coming together. There's still a little bit of moisture out there that we're cooking out. Oil, let's grab the onions. This paste looks pretty much reduced to me. That's all matter left, not so much water. So we're gonna take that off the heat. And I think while these onions cook down, we're gonna work on our chicken. So yeah, the chicken is nothing too intensive. It's really simple. I don't even know why I need a recipe. We have dried Italian herbs, which they have like thyme and oregano and stuff in Africa, so that's not too crazy. Um, onion powder, garlic powder, smoked paprika, mm. white pepper, cayenne pepper, bouillon powder, and salt. Oh, and I was this close to dropping my chicken. Okay, so what I've done, this morning I just took them out of their bag and put them in the refrigerator to dry out a little bit, because um, that was what the recipe said to do, and I think that's just to make sure they're nice and crispy, not too much moisture in them. Chicken, so many, so much chicken. I'm gonna need to invite some friends over. So we're putting that right in the bowl. And then we're gonna put together our spice mix. And you'll watch me do that because you watch me do everything. How creepy is that? Back at it again with the stack of spices. We're gonna use this bowl to put my spices in because I made it and I wanna show it off. Look how even it is. Not too shabby. One and a quarter teaspoons of salt. I'm not gonna measure that out perfectly because I think I might just use only this half teaspoon measurement so I don't have to do more dishes. I've never made chicken, wow, that was way too much salt. Chicken drumsticks before. I don't know, I'm not big. I don't love preparing meat. It kind of stresses me out because I just worry that I'm gonna like give myself and all of my peers salmonella. Also, yeah, I should do this quickly so that my chicken isn't just sitting out. Okay, so that's a uh, cayenne pepper. We got our old standby paprika. I love paprika. Did I mention that? It's gonna be the number one takeaway, isn't it, from this video? Onion powder, one and a half tablespoons. Okay, fine, I'll pull out a tablespoon measurement, fine. So that's garlic powder. <coughs> I totally just inhaled some. I'm like really hot right now. I should not be. <laughs> A corduroy, sure, but I like it. Pepper grinder, what I'm doing right now. I do not have pre-ground black pepper, but I do have thyme and rosemary, and I feel like that counts as Italian herbs. So 
we're just gonna add some of that in. Um, whoops, whoops. Oh, and then oregano, which is like the quintessential Italian herb. Oh, and basil. Pfft. This is what it looks like now. Not too exciting because it's all stacked onto each other. Just gonna mix that around a little bit. We're really Italian herby now. Place the chicken in a large bowl with all the spices and then drizzle with oil. Onions are looking really good. We're gonna drizzle this chicken with oil. That was a huge glug. And we're just really getting in there, mixing it around. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Here's, here's one of the drumsticks. Ooh. Ooh, the bones were shuffling inside of it. That was amazingly disgusting. Caught you. You thought I was gonna say amazing. There's our wire rack configuration and we're gonna start placing. And I think I might tilt you down again while we place our beautiful chicken drumsticks. If it doesn't look good, don't say anything, okay? Um, this one is all messed up. It's it's very messed up. I don't know if we're gonna even put that one on there because I don't think I want to deal with sorting through the gristle. I'd like them all to be intact. And that's still nine, which is plenty for a growing girl such as myself. Growing is of course referring to my YouTube following. That's what the chicken looks like. We're gonna put it in the oven. Capiche? Let's get back to our jollof rice. I did actually look up how to pronounce it and Google said jollof. So that's what we're going with. I'm gonna tilt you up again so you can see the top of my tiny little head or big little head, I don't know. And I'm actually gonna bring you over to the stove because that's where, that's the room where it happens. I should probably show you what I think golden brown looks like. But what if, what if everybody disagrees on what golden brown looks like and you all make fun of me? Oh, this is so precarious. That's what golden brown looks like to me. That's what we're going with. They're nice and soft, super fragrant. And we're gonna take half of them out for some reason. So we have left half of the onion in here and I'm supposed to add garlic ginger paste. I do have ginger. So we're gonna just use a microplane and add some of that in and then add some garlic in and it'll be good as, right as rain. So I'm just gonna start shaving like this. Okay, here is my half teaspoon of garlic. I'm gonna turn the heat back on. Start creating some ginger too. I used to care about like peeling my ginger, but I have a friend who makes really great food without peeling the ginger and grating it. So we're gonna try that. So we're just going. Okay, a bunch has already fallen in there. Final swipe of ginger. So we're gonna let those aromatics just roast for about a minute, according to the recipe, with these onions. Mm, smells so good. Obviously, because they're aromatics. Okay, next thing it tells me to add is tomato paste, which I truly deeply thought that I already had at home, but I don't. So I'm just gonna add a greater amount of crushed tomatoes and it still won't have quite the oomph that tomato paste has, but because we have this other homemade tomato paste, I don't feel too bad about it. Cooking that down. We have got some chicken bouillon over here. Um, just really so, so much flavor in these tiny little things. And then we're adding more spices, more paprika, pepper, salt, and thyme. Okay, and now we finally get our beautiful Tomato habanero paste. Oh, it's gonna be so spicy. And not just in a white people way either. And I'm getting three cups of what I have is jasmine rice. It says jasmine or basmati. And yes, it does make a difference. Those are aromatic. Also, we're gonna add some bay leaves because a bunch of other recipes have bay leaves. And I don't know if they actually do anything but I really love the idea of them. I love the idea of being a little dinosaur with leaves in your food. 
I'm actually getting super excited for this. It's been a long time since I've cooked a meal for myself. Um, that wasn't like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. It smells heavenly. It's a little hazy in here, but it's kind of like this uh, cigarette smoke of old movies, you know, that makes it like really pretty and like just hazy and dreamlike. We're gonna say that that's what I'm going for, for this one, because I didn't turn the van on for audio issues. Here's my washed rice. I'm very proud of it. That just leaked all over the place. Okay. This has been simmering. I'm gonna add the rice now. Just. So we're mixing this with the tomato sauce and then we're gonna add just enough hot water to cover the rice. I just burnt my towel. Do you see that? Where do I have to put it in order for you to see it? I just burnt my towel from putting it on <laughs> the stove top. Cool. Another disaster. Couldn't get away. Couldn't make one of these videos with at least one of without at least one of those. I just consider that just enough to cover our rice, right? Okay. Whatever. It's fine. We're gonna cover that up. Set another timer for 25 minutes. And I think we're gonna take a quick look at what our chicken is looking like. You hear that sizzle? Oh, it looks pretty good. We're gonna just flip those over. I will not be able to show you on camera because that would just be simply insane. <laughs> Breaking news, I reread through the recipe. I thought that I would have to cook the rice for 20 minutes and then fluff it and be done. It's an intermediate fluffing. It's only halfway through. I have to fluff it, cook it for another 20 minutes, and then let it rest for another 10. I knew my timing was too good to be true. I knew it, but it's gonna be amazing. I made guacamole right before this, so I'm invigorated. I'm not just like waiting, starving on my food. Okay, this is what the rice looks like 20 minutes in. We gotta fluff it and cook it for another 20, apparently. Oh, okay, we're gonna set this down. Fluff and continue steam. It smells awesome. We're gonna take it off the heat and keep steaming. Keep steaming, keep, keep steaming. Love. I actually don't know how that song goes. Let's see if I can get it on camera a little bit. That's our crispy chicken. Let's investigate a little bit. I mean, that actually looks pretty juicy. Now I'm worried. <coughs> I'm so paranoid about cooking chicken. Okay, in all its glory, this is what the rice looks like and this is what the chicken looks like um i'm gonna just portion some out and then you know talk about it Alrighty, we have my food in a bowl another one i made over the summer got my steamy rice and my chicken and we're just going for it It is spicy. You really get the habanero coming through. It reminds me a fair amount of just like Mexican rice with like all the tomato and the peppers and stuff and onions. I mean, I don't know what I was expecting. I'm not really familiar with African food, so I don't know how a traditional jollof rice might differ from this, but I really like this. This is good. I'd make it again. Let's try this chicken. You know what, that's also good. Like I said, never made drumsticks before, but 
nice and juicy. I swear it's cooked through. I checked all of them. Not the crispiest, but like super flavorful. Really great with the rice. I'm happy. This will be amazing to eat while I watch the movie. Hello, everybody. I'm gonna just sit down and give a quick review of the movie I watched um, for this week. I got a ring light. So lighting is a little bit better. I actually watched Mondabi and like ate the meal and everything yesterday and really enjoyed it. And I just figured that I'd benefit from just, you know, letting it percolate in my brain a little bit, kind of letting it hang out before giving a final review. But again, it's tough with international movies because I'm not really familiar with their histories or cultural backgrounds and, and their unique sensibilities in regards to filmmaking. So I don't like, I can't speak really to the quality of something, at least not yet. This was obviously the first Senegalese film I watched. I think it came out in 1968 and it is purported to be the first like feature length film released and made in an African language. And I really liked it. I thought it was really great. It kind of plays out, it's about this man and he has a, he has seven children and two wives, but it's really just about him. His name's Ibrahim. And he gets a money order from his nephew who's like living in France and he needs to fulfill this money order, but everywhere he goes, there's a bureaucracy that is stopping him from being able to because he doesn't have documentation. So he goes to this post office and he doesn't have an ID and he goes to get his ID and he needs three pictures and a birth certificate and he goes to get his birth certificate, but he doesn't know what month he was born in, so he can't do that. And just throughout, throughout the film, he's just stifled at every turn by bureaucracy and by other beggars and I think that it ends up shaking out to be a commentary about like the specific neo-colonialist circumstances of Senegal and how they kind of perpetuate the oppression of <laughs> certain populations and so that was really meaningful and I felt like there was a lot there for me to kind of hold on to and to explore and I mean cinematography is super sophisticated, gorgeous, the way that all of the people are styled and everything, it just, it makes Senegal look like beautiful, the way it frames the architecture, but also just most of the areas are very poor. It really juxtaposes the two different areas. Um, the city centers that have been obviously populated by French people historically, and then the more rural areas that are just rampant poverty. And the way that it frames those two are very unique and interesting. I mean, if you're familiar with the film Uncut Gems, it kind of ends up playing out similarly. Um, it's just the story about this man who's desperately trying to make something of himself and being stifled at every turn and in some ways because of his own hubris. <laughs> and it's really intense, super stressful. Um, it's a really interesting film. It's only, I think, I believe it's only like 92 minutes, so, uh, which is super refreshing. Most modern films released in theaters tend to air on the side of over two hours, which I am personally opposed to. But what are you gonna do? So yeah, based on this, I like Senegalese films and I plan on watching more. I don't know if I enjoyed it quite as much as The Secret in Our Eyes, just because The Secret in Our Eyes plays out like a straight up melodrama and ends on a little more of a hopeful note, but I don't blame Mondavi for not doing that. There's the heater kicking in. Awesome. It's a motif very loud but I'll cut something together I I probably sound severely pretentious and goofy but um I really liked the movie it was a good weekend getting to make this dish and watch this movie and think about it and look forward to doing it again grateful to do it I feel like I'm learning a lot and I'll see you all probably in a couple of days because the semester is coming to an end and I really gotta start cranking these videos out. That's it.